You might remember from our most recent road trip where I drove this Civic down to Key West, Florida and then up to Nova Scotia, Canada. And you might remember in that road trip series, I mentioned that I bought this car for $5,000. And I got a ton of comments from people saying that that was completely bogus. There's no way I could buy this car for $5,000. Civic Type R replicas like this usually sell for $10,000. Real Civic Type R sell for twenty dollars to $30,000. And I've even seen an Integra Type R sell for over $60,000. So how the heck did I buy this car for $5,000? Well, I didn't. I actually bought this car for $2,800, but it looked nothing like this when I got it. Let me show you what it looked like when I bought it. I just bought this car. It's a 97 Civic DX that's made to look like a Type R. It does have a B16 engine in it, which is freaking awesome. 1997 Honda Civic uh, with a Type R front end and uh, B16B engine. Runs well, runs very healthy, revs to like close to 9,000 RPM. Let me show the interior here. So this is the interior. Um, it's got a Type R short throw shifter apparently. Uh, hopefully I can find a Type R actual shift knob. Um, but yeah, it's got an SI cluster on it and uh, it's got like this sweet Type R block off plate for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, RSX seats are in it right now. He included these seats, which are EP3 SI seats. Yeah, that's right. Now you can believe that I bought this car for $2,800. This thing had seen better days. It had dents in the side, multiple colors. The interior was a mess. Shoot, it even came with a colony of ants. The goal for our road trip was to spend $5,000 on cars. So I decided to undershoot and get a car $2,200 less than the budget. That way I could spend the extra money to make it nicer. So I'm just gonna spend the rest of the budget to just like clean the car up and actually paint it all one color. Get rid of some of these stickers, slightly modified. Um, but yeah, it should be a pretty good base. Maybe change out the headlights with some actual Type R headlights. And um, yeah, I've already got Type R side skirts on it. There's a Type R rear lip back here. It is way too low. Uh, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do right now to fix that. It takes not one, not two, but three blocks of wood to get the front end up high enough to be able to fit the jack under and actually get the frame rails up. I raised the car 1.5 inches in order to get it to proper ride height. The next thing to do was remove the bone rattling solid engine mounts. Okay, so here is the old mount, uh, the old new mount. Uh, this is a solid mount and uh, it's nice for preventing wheel hop and stuff like that, but it's like really rattly. So we have a stock mount to replace it. I'm replacing all three. There's another one there, and there's another one there, and there's the stock mount to replace it. So the car will be much less uh, rattly. It's hard to show you guys in a video how rattly the car is, but uh, it, it's bad. Next, I got rid of those flashy wheels to go with something a little bit more subtle. Then I went to JSpec Auto to pick up some more parts for the car. So uh, yeah, not everything is Type R in here, and uh, I need to change that. So I am here at JSpec to get the rest of the uh, actual Type R goodies. I got an all genuine Type R steering wheel, shift knob, gauge cluster, tail lights, and a rear spoiler. We have the Type R wing on, fits very nicely. Also, I just installed the Type R steering wheel. So we're getting all the Type R stuff. It's, uh, it's really turning into something. Then I had to paint the car one color. This two-tone look was killing me. I decided to paint the car a true Type R color, championship white. All right, we have the Civic all apart. Got all the trim and panels off over here and um, started to sand a little bit, get a little bit of Bondo filling in some of these uh, cracks and holes. Thanks to this guy. You remember him? Do you remember him? He was in one of our videos. He doesn't like being on camera. Things are getting out of hand. It's, it's looking way too legit around here, John. This was originally gonna be a rattle can paint job, and now, and now look at us. Championship white, full base. Uh, I opted for one less L because it was cheaper. And um, this is where the LS is gonna go, apparently. <laughs> um, but yeah, so John is over here working like a boss, taping everything off, and uh, I'm editing and being lazy. <laughs> and he keeps running away from me. I don't know if you've noticed that. He doesn't like being on camera, despite him being in one of our videos.
My friend John did an incredible job painting this car. We went with a two-stage paint job, one base coat and one clear coat. Because John was so generous with his time, I managed to get this car painted for pretty cheap and also with great quality. John freaking killed it on this thing. It looks awesome. A brand new freaking car. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. So uh, I just kind of set these panels onto the Civic here because uh, I still want them to cure a little bit before I button everything up. But I'm just like blown away. This thing is like the nicest paint I've ever had on a car. Uh, I just freaking, I, uh, I, I, I'm speechless. It's amazing. John, you did amazing. All right, this is it, the final product of the paint. I think it turned out quite amazing. Um, it looks so good. Um, and I finally got all the panels connected back onto it and everything is like legit type R. Got the new eBay headlights on there because uh, the genuine ones are like $900. But really, all in all, I could not be happier with the way this turned out. Um, so now I'm putting the interior back in place, obviously panels missing but uh, yes we painted the jams all the jams are painted uh, and the trunk jam the next thing I wanted to do was some general maintenance so I'm currently draining the coolant because I'm about to replace all of these silicone hoses because um, they're ugly and also one of them is leaking um, red I don't think fits very well in this engine bay uh, gonna change the valve cover out with the legit type R valve cover not the Mugen one um, and yeah just replace a bunch of gaskets and whatnot which I have over here so here's all the radiator hoses. Every single one of those is gonna get replaced. Uh, I'm changing the timing belt and water pump, uh, new clamps, spark plugs, fuel filter, thermostat, and a couple miscellaneous gaskets. So we're just gonna do that as preventative maintenance and uh, hopefully we don't have anything go wrong on this uh, upcoming road trip. The black radiator hoses made the engine bay look a ton better. I also removed the aftermarket intake for a stock intake and replaced the valve cover with a proper Type R valve cover. Alright, I just picked up some more parts for the Civic. Uh, the clutch master cylinder went out, so I picked this up um, for pretty cheap. Got myself a timing belt, some bushings, and some brakes. Alright, so I have the old uh, clutch master cylinder removed from the car. It's sitting over here, and as you can see, it was definitely leaking out of the plunger there, um, which is not good potentially fail on the road trip uh, and cause me stranded without clutch action. So we've got this nice new one now and it is definitely not leaking. Comes a nice little seal on there. Looks shiny, which is always a plus. You go ahead and drop it in. All right, so I have the new power stop brakes on here. Got some nice new rotors, nice pads. These are brand new calipers. Um, I've painted them their regular color so they won't rust. They're just gonna look nice in OEM for a long time. Um, but when I was going through, I found this little Cut in the OEM brake line. Um, looks like something rubbed at it at some point. So that is not safe. Can't run that on the road, or at least I'm, I shouldn't run that on the road, because I could burst and I'd lose my brakes. So, ordered some stainless steel braided uh, brake lines for both fronts. These are stainless steel and coated in a direct OEM M fit. So, we're gonna throw these on next. So I've got the Type R cluster, I've got the Type R steering wheel, the Type R shift knob type our little badge there but uh, I just couldn't go without the type R seats so these are the Recaros um, they are technically from an Integra type R they're black and not red the Civic had red seats um, these do have like nice little red stitching here but I decided since I didn't have the budget for the red carpet and door panels that the black seats would fit the look of this interior a little bit better I think they look amazing and I am stoked to ride in these seats for you know 7,000 miles on this road trip now I know what you're thinking that's a lot of money but I sold some of the stuff that I took off of the car, things like the SI gauge cluster, the seats, the solid motor mounts. So I recouped some of that money. And there you have it, the car was now in full road trip form. I had invested $5,000 into this car to get it in road trip form. Now, sure, the car was worth a lot more than that. It's probably worth seven or $8,000, but I had $5,000 of my money invested into this car and a lot of time and hours to get it where I wanted it. And that just goes to show you that you can get some nice stuff sometimes if you're willing to put in the work. Now that's not all. I've done a lot to this car since the road trip. You remember James Houghton complaining about my tires? This is like pretty, kind of, this is pretty Type R-ish. Yeah. I would call it Type R-esque, this yes, car. Yes, it is what's Type R-esque. What's it missing? What does it need to be Type R? 
before it needs anything to be Type R, it needs some tires. tires. <laughs> I'd rather have OEM 1998 yeah. Type R tires yeah, than seriously. those tires that are on yeah. there. Yeah. Well, I decided to get some Volk CE28N wheels, since I think they look amazing. I wrapped them with some Bridgestone Potenza RE71 tires. They've transformed the car even more. All right, it is after the road trip, and I have taken the valve cover off um, because I'm going to get it re-powder coated, um, so it's going to look fresh, brand new. It was peeling up a little bit over there in the corner before, so now it will look nice and brand new. Um, but the next thing is that we've got to get rid of this header. As you saw on the road trip to Nova Scotia, the header cracked right here. We had it re-welded. It's very strong weld, um, so I mean, I don't think it's going to break again, but uh, it doesn't give me enough clearance for an AC condenser. Well, before I can put AC into the car, I had to remove the old exhaust header. And I might as well remove the old cat back as well, because the drone is killing me. I went back to JSpec Auto to look at their vast exhaust selection, and I found a perfectly OEM EK9 Civic Type R stock exhaust. I couldn't believe it. I had to have it. So I bought that and a Type R header. So I picked up this bad boy along with this nice pipe and that header there. Um, that is all bone stock imported from Japan, 1997 EK9 Type R Honda Civic exhaust. Uh, so it's a little bit bigger than the standard, you know, Civic exhaust. It's still still pretty big, actually, for a stock exhaust. I'm pretty surprised. Um, but it's going to be quiet and not buzzing and not annoying. So that's very exciting. So I'm excited to put that stuff on. That should clear my AC, as you can tell. And uh, yeah, I'm here at a junkyard. Um, I have found an EK and an EG. Uh, and together, they both have most of the parts that I need. Um, so I've got the AC dryer with the hard line that goes back to the uh, firewall. Got some power steering stuff here. Um, it's all definitely going to need to be cleaned up. Um, got some, you know, the brackets and stuff that I need. So this is the AC bracket that the compressor connects to. I'm going to clean it up a bit. But this goes down here, maybe if I can show you, somewhere down there like that. And uh, that should mount my AC so I can actually be cool while I'm driving this cool car. All right, we are getting rid of this Yonaka muffler. Uh, man, hopefully long term I can get rid of those red braces. I think those look pretty tacky. But uh, yep, we're gonna get rid of this whole whole exhaust system, and uh, we're gonna go with bone stock Type R exhaust. Never been a big fan of the way that this fit up at the bumper, and uh, it's just a little too loud. It's too it's too Honda. I need to go back. I've gone too far. All right, we have got the shiny new valve cover on. I think it looks fantastic. It looks just absolutely brand new. Uh, amazing. So, got the AC also plumbed in. These are the proper EK uh, AC lines. I'm currently working on the power steering right now, so the pump is in here. It's just kind of just dangling. Um, and I've got this power steering line running to the rack, um, which I have to get from underneath the car. It's very annoying. The subframe is very tight. It's all crammed in there. It's very annoying. And uh, my finger dexterity is crumbling um, but this is the high pressure line I got it brand new that's gonna go from the pump right here all the way to the rack and then you've got another low pressure line to this reservoir here um, which runs to this low pressure line all the way to the rack as well so it's actually a lot of components going on just with the power steering um, and then also the AC you'll notice how much more crammed it is here than it was with the old setup but it's gonna be worth it it's gonna be very worth it also that valve cover just looks amazing unbelievable I'm now about $8,000 invested into this car. Now, keep in mind that's $8,000 in parts. That doesn't include the countless hours of labor put into this car over the last six months. This isn't the kind of car that you can just go out and buy for $8,000. You're probably looking at closer to $10,000. Now, was it worth it? Yes, absolutely. This car is amazing. Now, this car is still not a full Civic Type R replica. There's a couple main things that I'm missing. I don't have the five lug conversion. Also, it's left-hand drive and not right-hand drive and the chassis would need to be stitch welded. Now, let's be honest, I'm probably never gonna do that. I think that's what separates this car from the real 20 to $30,000 Civic Type Rs. And I'll be honest, I don't think I'm ever gonna wanna do that because right now this car is fantastic. It's a ton of fun to drive and I'm not sure if I wanna dump that much more money into it. I might do the five lug conversion and put some stock Civic Type R wheels onto it, but that would probably be about it. Uh, I could reach out to Hybrid Racing, maybe K-Tuned, and put a K-Series into this thing. But right now, I'm just going to drive it around, and I'm just going to enjoy it. I've had a ton of people message me asking to buy this car. Probably 30 or 40 people after the road trip. And right now, the answer is no. But I suppose everything has a price. <laughs>